A properly crafted photo is made from three ingredients, shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Together, these three camera settings contribute to the overall exposure of an image, as well as its depth of field, level of motion blur, and appearance of grain. In auto mode, your camera will produce an adequately bright image, but it may not suit your creative needs. This is where changing over to manual mode becomes useful. In manual mode, the camera settings are no longer surrendered and you have full control over how your image will look. The only catch is that you will need to know how to maintain a sufficiently bright image, one with no blown highlights and hopefully no clip shadows, and knowing the values of shutter speed, aperture, and ISO that produce these images will be helpful in adjusting your camera as you seek to fulfill your creative ideas. Let's talk about equivalent exposures. What are equivalent exposures? Well, let's say you want to photograph a flower in the bright sunlight and find that using an aperture of f8, an ISO of 100, and a shutter speed of 1 250th of a second produces a sufficiently bright image, but doesn't have the shallow depth of field effect that you envisioned. If you wanted to use your lens's maximum aperture to create a shallow depth of field, let's say the lens can stop down to a maximum of f2.8 and try to take a photo, it would be extremely overexposed. So how would we use shutter speed and ISO to compensate for the extra light entering the camera? Let's assume that your camera can only go down to ISO 100, so it can't be adjusted to make the image darker. We will need to modify the shutter speed, but by how much? Well, we can look at the number of stops we adjusted the aperture by and change the shutter speed by the same number. Going from f8 to f2.8 is a three stop increase in the amount of light entering the camera. So we need to adjust our shutter speed from 1 250th of a second to 1 2000th of a second. This new exposure of f2.8 with an ISO of 100 and shutter speed of 1 2000th of a second is equivalent to the one before. It's what we call an equivalent exposure. But how do we calculate equivalent exposures? Well, it's relatively simple. If you want to adjust one camera setting, let's say aperture, to make the image brighter, then you need to adjust ISO or shutter speed, whichever one is appropriate, to make the image darker. It's a matter of finding a combination of settings that balance to create an image that is technically perfect based on the creative choices you have made. Just like the example earlier, since the original settings of f8, ISO 100, and 1 250th of a second weren't suiting our creative vision, we adjusted the aperture to produce a shallower depth of field. But because we consequently let more light into the camera, we needed to quicken the shutter speed to decrease the exposure to an adequate level. On screen now are lists of full stop increments for shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. Stop increments for shutter speed to right, we see an increase in image exposure and a decrease in depth of field as aperture is adjusted, a decrease in motion blur as shutter speed is adjusted, and an increase in grain as ISO is adjusted. For constant lighting conditions, moving in a rightward direction on the chart, increasing the amount of light led into the camera, for either the aperture, shutter speed, or ISO setting, requires a net equal and opposite adjustment in the other direction. To make sense of this, let's do another example, this time with a perfect starting exposure of 1 15th of a second, ISO 800, and F4. Let's say that I wanted to take a portrait, and I wanted minimal motion blur and a shallow depth of field, forcing me to change my shutter speed to 1 1 25th of a second, and my aperture to F2. Through this transformation, I decreased the amount of light entering my camera by one stop, since I increased aperture size by two stops from F4 to F2, but decrease the amount of light by three stops by quickening the shutter speed. If I tried taking a picture now, the shot would be one stop underexposed, so we need to raise our ISO from 800 to 1600 to brighten the image. So the equivalent exposure to 1 15th of a second ISO 800 and F4 would in this case be 1 1 25th of a second F2 and ISO 1600. It's important to note that this is only one situation. If I was shooting a landscape and wanted low noise and high depth of field, forcing me to change my aperture to f8 and my ISO to 100, I would need to compensate the five stop reduction in light with the shutter speed, causing me to expose for two whole seconds to maintain proper image brightness. Another example would be working with ND filters. ND filters block the amount of light reaching the camera, allowing for the use of long exposures during the daytime, and are rated in stops of light blocking capability. If you are shooting a landscape with a shutter speed of 1 60th of a second, F11 and ISO 100, adding a 10 stop ND filter would let you use an equivalent exposure with a shutter speed of 15 seconds. Since 10 stops of light were removed from the ND filter, we added 10 stops of light with the shutter speed to produce an image with the same brightness but with a longer shutter speed effect. 
So in essence, learning equivalent exposures is really learning about the push-pull nature of camera settings. In the video description, I have included a PDF version of the full stop chart displayed earlier. Not only is this helpful for calculating equivalent exposures, but it also shows how manipulating camera settings changes the effects you see in your photos. Remember to rate the video, leave a comment with your feedback, and let me know if this video helped. Subscribe to and support the channel if desired, and as always, thank you for watching.